Rule number one. If you're a false prophet, don't affirm the inspiration, preservation, and authority of scriptures that contradict your revelations. You'll only end up destroying your own religion. Paul's message about Jesus and the Gospel is the same message we find prophesied in the Old Testament, the same message preached by Jesus and his original followers. You are not good enough to enter the presence of God. All our righteousness is as filthy rags before God. If you think you're good enough to meet God, you have a pretty low view of God, and that's part of the problem. What this means is that if we want to be accepted by God, we need a righteousness that comes from God, not from ourselves. The Gospel is a message about how God gives us this righteousness through Jesus Christ. You might not like the message, but there's nothing incoherent or illogical about it. Muhammad's message, by contrast, self-destructs because the Quran affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of scriptures that completely contradict Islam. In Surah 3 verses 3 to 4, Allah says that He revealed the Torah and the Gospel. In Surah 7 verse 157, Allah says that Christians were still reading the Gospel during the time of Muhammad. We have copies of the Gospel before the time of Muhammad, during the time of Muhammad, and after the time of Muhammad, so we know what the Gospel during Muhammad's time said. We've still got it. In Surah 6 verse 115 and Surah 18 verse 27, Allah says that no one can change His words. No one is powerful enough to change Allah's words. Recall that Allah already said that the Torah and the Gospel are His words, which means that the Torah and the Gospel cannot be corrupted. Not surprisingly, according to the Quran, the Gospel is still authoritative scripture. Allah even commands Christians to judge by what we read in the Gospel. He says in Surah 5 verse 47, Let the people of the Gospel judge by what Allah hath revealed therein. If any do fail to judge by the light of what Allah hath revealed, they are no better than those who rebel. So Allah says that He revealed the Gospel, inspiration, He says that no one can change His words, preservation, and He commands Christians to judge by the Gospel, authority. The problem for Islam is that if we judge by the Gospel, as Allah commands, we have to reject Islam, because the Gospel plainly declares that Jesus is the divine Son of God who died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead, and that anyone who comes against this message is not from God. There are only two possibilities here, my friends. Either Christians have the inspired, preserved, authoritative Word of God, or we don't. If we have the Word of God, Islam is false, because Islam contradicts our scriptures. If we don't have the Word of God, Islam is false, because Islam affirms our scriptures. If we have the Word of God, Islam is false. And if we don't have the Word of God, Islam is false. Either way, Islam is false. Unlike Paul's message, Muhammad's message self-destructs. In case you're wondering, yes, this would be an excellent time for our Muslim friends to start looking for a new prophet. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. In case you stumbled upon this video while browsing or searching, I wanted to let you know that it's part of a series comparing Paul and Muhammad. So if you'd like to see the full series, be sure to click on the playlist. If you're already in the playlist, you're about to see how Muhammad's revelations insult Jesus. Paul's don't.